Hello, today I'm going to make a brief presentation about the EU Survey tool. On the first slide, you can find the login and the registration link. If you do not have an account, you can create one by clicking on the registration link. This is the first page you see. After the creation of your account, you can go to login. After you click the login, this page appears where you have to choose what is appropriate for you. When you click connect, you are asked for the email you used to create your account. Next, you are asked for your password and your mobile phone. When you click sign in, a code will be sent to your phone. Then you write the code in the box that appears and that's it. Now we are in the EU survey tool. This is your dashboard. You can create a new survey by clicking the green button. Also, you can see how many surveys you have, how many are published and how many responded. I'm going to click on the title of my existing survey. The first tab is called Overview. Here you can find the link of your survey. You can also set the starting date for your survey to be published and an ending date for when your survey to be unpublished. Or you can do it manually with the blue button. The second tab is the Editor tab. Here you can see the navigation, which is the first column. The navigation is useful when having a big survey and finding what you are looking for faster. The second column is the toolbox. The toolbox has everything you need to create your survey. It has many types of questions, you can add text or images and many other options. Each question has its own properties. When you click on a question, you can find its properties on the right side of your screen. Now let's see some types of questions. The first example is a free text question. In the element properties, you can see the type of the question, you can edit the text and tick the mandatory box if you want the answer to be required. There are also other properties which can be used according to your needs. The next type is a single choice question. Here you can see some new properties like the possible answers the style of the button and the order of the answers. Another type of question is a multiple choice question. As you can see, the properties are the same as a single choice question, but the main difference is that you can have more than one answer selected instead of one. Moving on to the next tab is the test tab. Here you can see your survey as it will appear to your participants. Next is the Results tab. In the Results tab, you can see at the top the questions you used in the survey. Here we have their name, the surname, email, telephone, city, etc. And below, you can see the answers for each question. This is the Participants tab. Here, you can create a list with the participants you would like to invite to complete the survey. Moving on is the Privileges tab. Here you can add a user and give access to the survey. The added user will be able to edit the survey. This is the Translations tab. In this tab you can add translations to your survey. I created the survey in the English language so the default language for the survey is English. Then I added the Greek translation of the survey. 